How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. This week is going to probably be a crazy week for crypto and for Bitcoin. We have a lot of big events happening this week, a lot of macro events happening this week, and the ETFs continue to buy. There are more people talking about Bitcoin, some billionaires recently that have a huge presence that are now talking about Bitcoin, being bullish on Bitcoin. We also have some interesting information, too, from a couple whales that are now buying and some uh, other data that I think a lot of people just don't see, like the demand for not even just Bitcoin, but other products and other cryptocurrencies is huge. I want to go through a lot of that. And we'll also be talking about a meme coin that I called out a little while ago that's doing really well and is still quite small. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notifications underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this. There's going to be a link to Marjax underneath the video as well in case you want to trade cryptocurrency on leverage. Like I've said, this is the time to trade on leverage or to go long on leverage is during a bull market and we should be getting a lot more bullish momentum. Now, of course, if you think we're too frothy, you can always short the market as well. You can bet that the market's going down. I don't like to do that with the best performing asset in the world. But you can do that on Marjax or other crypto exchanges. This uh, exchange is a little bit smaller, so they have typically really good customer support. If you have any questions or uh, you need help with something, they respond within a minute or two with a real person. There's also going to be a link to CoinW underneath the video. Now, this uh, exchange is a little bit bigger. They have futures trading and they also have spot trading. They are partnered with like Crypto Banter as well and DaVinci. So they have some big brands that they are associated with. If you want to check them out underneath the video, there's a link to them as well. Both links give you access to other um, like incentives too, like different bonuses. Now, Bitcoin has done extremely well. Like just look at the stair step up. There are some days where it's sideways, but yeah, we just continue moving up. Like the, the candles in general continue to move up and... We'll get some volatility, but we've been rejected around 70K like three times. Uh, sometimes we've broken out slightly above 70K, but just like touch it, reject, touch it, reject, touch it, reject. And that only lasts so long before we break through. Now, Bill Ackman talked about Bitcoin uh, just yesterday, uh, how Bitcoin's price rise leads to increased mining and greater energy use, driving up the cost of energy. Anyways, we talked about this in a video. Uh, he said, maybe I should buy some Bitcoin. Now, this is interesting because he got 5 million views. He's obviously from traditional finance, if you haven't already heard me talk about this. He has 1.2 million followers. He buys like restaurants and stuff like that, like pretty boring companies. Robert Kiyosaki, also very well known as well. Uh, Robert, maybe not, uh, maybe he's not a billionaire, but if not, he's pretty close. Bill Ackman is a billionaire. And Robert's been bullish on Bitcoin for years, uh, on and off, mostly on though. But he said, don't be scared, be prepared. US debt, 34 trillion. Debt increasing by 1 trillion every 90 days. America is sick, prepare now. Buy gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Please take care. This is interesting because he's so well known for buying real estate, like back in the day. But a lot of the time he's talking about gold, silver, and Bitcoin, like those hard assets instead of real estate. Now, this got a million views as well. Like there are just a lot of people that are turning to Bitcoin, talking about Bitcoin, buying Bitcoin, and the ETFs are swallowing up a lot of Bitcoin as well. Like last week, they bought 33,614 Bitcoin. That's a lot. That's way more than what was mined. And some people are calling this like the, the ETFs coming to the market similar to the first halving, like it cuts down the amount of Bitcoin by a similar amount. And we're about to go into the fourth halving as well. Uh, I believe it's the fourth, um, the fourth halving as well, which cuts down the Bitcoin even more. So like these two things um, right next to each other are extremely bullish. Some people are even saying, really, we should be looking at the, the start of the ETFs as a halving, like that is the new halving event. And we should base all the the cycle theory off of that date, that January 11, instead of the actual date that's about 40 days away for the next halving. We do have a couple big events. This is why I say like this is going to be a probably a crazy week for crypto and crazy week for the market. We have core CPI coming in uh, on Tuesday. So March 12, the previous was 0.4%. The expectation is 0.3%. Uh, core CPI is also coming that day. So year over year, it's supposed to be 3.7. It was 3.9. Uh, 
if this comes in high, obviously the markets are gonna are gonna be hurt. Um, but if it comes in low, it could be really bullish. Or even if it hits expectations, it'll probably be bullish. The median forecast for CPI year over year is 3.1%. Imagine if we came in a little bit below that, right around 3%, 2.9. Extremely, extremely bullish. We also have PPI on Thursday. So nothing Wednesday, but then Thursday, we have PPI and core PPI coming in. The expectation is 0.3%. Last time it was 0.3%. Core PPI, they don't show uh, expectation here, but uh, last time it was 0.6%. So obviously we want those to come down a decent amount. Um, so last time you can see the PPI and core PPI there, they're both much lower than the CPI. And then next week, not sorry, not this coming week, but the next week after that, we do have the FOMC interest rate decision. We have initial jobless claims. We have existing home sales. So we do have another big week after this week. Uh, obviously the market is not pricing in any rate cut in March, but it will be interesting to see how Jerome Powell speaks about the economy, speaks about interest rates in general, especially since we will have some more data, the PPI and CPI, which I'm sure he already knows about. He sounded pretty dovish last week too. So he might already know what is coming for these PPI and CPI numbers. Usually they do kind of seem like they know ahead of time, especially Jerome Powell. Like he, he might get data or the data might be public the week after he talks and there's some indication uh, that he already kind of knows what's going to happen. So it will be interesting to see what he says in a week and a half. Now, we got more and more USDT printed. Now, I should hit on the fact that like the market is not pricing in interest rates, uh, interest rate cuts next week or the week after, maybe not even in May. But yet, crypto is still doing extremely well, and that's just because... There's so much demand. Of course, there's going to be more demand if we start cutting rates because more people want to invest in risk on assets. We know that's coming, though. So some people are already allocating and some people are just trying to get some USDT to then buy cryptos in the first place. Like the market cap of Tether is bigger than it's ever been. The circulating supply is over $100 billion. They're printing money all the time. They're printing USDT all the time, which means there's more money on the sidelines. Now, I see this happening and I do think, well, part of it is just that the whole market's going up. So if crypto is at $1 trillion versus $3 trillion, and we're at like 2.7, uh, depending on where you're looking at, 2.6, 2.7, like USDT should be bigger if we're three times the size because people do take profits and then uh, put in USDT, they need to print more USDT. So just because this is getting bigger, isn't always like a crazy thing like so many people are getting ready with money on the sidelines. Part of it is just that the the market in general is a lot bigger, so USDT should be bigger. Now, I'm not saying that in a bear sense. Uh, it is bullish when there's more money on the sidelines in USDT, but just keep that in mind. You know, This is normal to see USDT increase when the whole market's increasing. Big Whale, Big Whale address bought some more Bitcoin. You can see they have 31,562 Bitcoin. They bought just 9,000 Bitcoin two days ago. Two days ago on the 8th, they bought 9,000 Bitcoin. Then they sold 20 Bitcoin. Then they bought three Bitcoin. Then they sold. Of course, we don't know if they're actually buying and selling the Bitcoin. They might just be transferring it. But most likely, they're buying it. Like, why would you transfer 9,000 Bitcoin into this wallet unless it was newly bought? If you had it in a different wallet, you probably had it in a wallet with less cryptocurrency in it. Like, if you had two wallets, right? Uh, one with 9,000, then one with this 22,000. Why would you move the 9,000 to the one that's bigger? Like usually you would diversify among more wallets. So this wallet is relatively new too. I mean, actually, I shouldn't even say relatively. It is new. It's really new. It came in February uh, with the first deposit and didn't really start depositing until weeks later, like less than two, three weeks ago. They start to actually deposit significant amounts of Bitcoin and since then, they've just been stacking like mad. Now they're one of the largest wallets, top, I think it's top 30, if I remember right, top 30 wallet in the world accumulating Bitcoin. GSOL is something that's really interesting. This shows you how much demand there is for Solana. I've seen this with like Chainlink too. This is one of the products that they have over at Grayscale that's similar to like GBTC, but it's for a different asset. It's for Solana. 
and they allow you to get access to an investment vehicle that has underlying Solana. The, the thing is though, they have a much larger management fee than even GBTC. GBTC is 1.5%. The Solana uh, GSOL is 2.5%. Now this has, I think, a market cap right around 50, yeah, $50 million. Uh, and I shouldn't say market cap, an AUM of $50 million. The crazy thing is how much people are bidding this up. The net asset value per share is $55 and the market price is 540. So that means when you buy $100 worth of this stock or this ETF, you own about $10 worth of Solana. That's nuts. The premium is 900% and we've seen that with Chainlink as well. I'm not sure if this is institutions getting in or if it's just retail investors. It, it wouldn't really make sense for a retail investor to buy something like this because there's so little underlying Solana. But I suppose some people may be just are dumb or something, I'm not sure. Uh, but to buy something like this, when you have access to the underlying Solana, wouldn't really make sense. Now, there are some people though, they don't have access to Solana, maybe a hedge fund or something that want access. It's just, it would be surprising to me even that they would buy something with such a premium like this. Because if this, let's say this were to become a spot, a spot Solana trust, like this premium would go away. Uh, this, this would be just crazy. Uh, and Chainlink is the same way. They are at a similar value or net asset value compared to the price, but theirs is smaller. I think it's like maybe one fourth the AUM of the G soul. So th that's just crazy how much this is going for and how much people are paying for this. This shows you the demand for some of these products is just absolutely insane. Now, speaking of Solana, there's a Solana meme going that I've mentioned in the past, Whenever you're looking at meme coins, know that they're risky, right? I'm not putting in 5% of my net worth in a meme coin. I know some people have that. Like there are some people on Twitter that are just absolutely huge on meme coins. Uh, Zach Humphreys talks about meme coins a lot and he just pointed out just the tip VIP under a $3 million market cap. And I've talked about this actually when it was closer to a million market cap, talking about how I think it could do well. And that was just like in the last week. Now it's growing, like their followers are growing. They're doing more marketing in general. Uh, and you can see the price is going absolutely insane, up 500% in 24 hours, up to a $3.4 million market cap. Liquidity of $500,000. I'll leave a link to this. I I do own some of the token to be completely transparent. Uh, I'll leave a link to this underneath the video because it shows you how to actually swab. It's um, over on Jupiter or Fluxbeam if you want. but do your own research. Like I don't care in the end if you buy it. I'm just saying that I do hold a little bit of a bag in this and it is something that I'm holding on to for now. Uh, and remember, it all comes back It all comes back to Bitcoin in the end. Balaji just posted this great uh, little graphic here. Bitcoin has hit all-time highs all over the world. It doesn't really matter what country you're in. Bitcoin's hitting an all-time high there. Right? We hit an all-time high in the US dollar, which has some of the lowest inflation in all the world. There are currencies that Bitcoin's up like 200, 300% since the last cycle. I know it sounds crazy, but there are countries with huge inflation. So yeah, they're continuously getting uh, devalued versus Bitcoin. Maybe you want a little bit more Bitcoin. I know some people are going to like Bitcoin hyper, hyper, hyper Bitcoinization recently. And they're saying we're never going to see another down cycle. So yeah, get ready because some people are extremely bullish and are going to bid this thing to the moon. As you can see here too, bullish momentum on the one hour indicator over on HG Algo. If you want access to HG Algo, there is a link underneath the video. It's 20% off right now. I don't know how long we'll keep at 20% off, but if you want in on it, it's a really helpful tool for navigating these markets. It's also that link to Margex underneath the video. And you know, having something like this set up can be really useful. So even if you just want to set up an account with no KYC, deposit $100, try the trading, make sure you understand it. You can always try that. There's also that link to CoinW, which also doesn't have KYC. So you can set these up in just a few minutes. And I do think it's important to have multiple exchanges set up for trading or for holding crypto. Uh, of course, the majority of your bag should probably be in cold storage, but wherever you're trading with, right, that should be spread over a couple different platforms because sometimes there is volatility, sometimes there's price lags, sometimes there are issues trying to 
deposit or withdrawal, they're, they're frozen. We've seen that with Coinbase and with Binance recently. So just make sure that you have your bag spread out on multiple wallets on multiple wallets and multiple exchanges and that you realize that you know not your keys not your crypto thank you so much i appreciate it let me know your thoughts underneath the video and i'll see you in the next one